Hello there everyone, my name is Ray and today we're here to play some more Tales of Xeria post game part number 15. Thank you all for joining for today's episode. Expedition as always. And uh, we'll send them back out again. And I want to... Where is... Alright, that's basically all I wanted to do, so I guess we're going back to the Brunei Plateau, and I've got, let's see again, open up the map real quick. Unless there's one in the River of Nature's Power, I've not, I've not seen any, so we're going to go to uh, Yasalt real quick, and then we're going to go to Terra, oh, wait, no, no, this is the one, we're going to go to Terra Island, and... Why did it glitch on my screen? Did it do that to y'all? Maybe I'm just tripping. Maybe it could have been the TV. I don't know, but to me it looked like the the screen just kind of glitched. Anyway, how's everybody doing? Hope all is well. Gonna head to Terra Island this episode, and I know in our main playthrough we already went there, but I did still want to get it out of the way. Um, there's an exclamation point down there, so I guess I'll do that too, just to get it over with. Is this? Talk. I hear there's one really passionate Lady Teresa fan in Helleves. Lady oh, yeah. Um, do ya? Huh? Um, yeah, yeah, we don't Teresa's care. We've already talked to you before. I thought you were somebody special. Every time I see an exclamation point on screen, or every time I see an exclamation point somewhere, I'm just like, oh my god, it's something new, something special. I'm telling you guys. It's one of the main things I like about RPGs. I know I've said it. I don't know how many times you guys are probably getting tired of hearing about it. Get over it because you're going to keep hearing about it. It's just an awesome part of it to me. But anyway, can you get up there, Miss Velvet? You're starting to to uh, to uh, to uh, to um talk to this fellow. We already know what he's about. Send us to Terra Island real quick so we can make it happen. Yes. What the hell? Take a load off, sit for a spell, and have a snack. Wait, did you say Norman Island? You heard right! This island is homeland for all us Norman! It's good to be back. I haven't been here for at least 1,500 years. Oh, It's you, Grimoire! How you been? It's good to see you! And you. You guys knew what this place was all along. Why didn't you say something sooner? Well, I didn't just sound it so cool talking about venturing into the unknown and all that, so I didn't want to burst his bubble. Sometimes it's good to let someone dream, no matter how far-fetched said dream might actually be. This island is way too good to be true, first mate. Ah, everything's so nice and laid back here. I could just relax like this for a thousand years. So, when people say this place absorbs power from all existence, this is what they meant? Well, they're not wrong, I guess. So, what should we do? Do you really think it's okay to mark this island on the map? Let's not. I got a feeling this might be one of those places that's best kept a secret. Yeah, you're probably right. Well, so much for Terror Island, I guess. How are you supposed to mark this place on a map when it's always moving around? This is the thing. Is Isle of Terror. If this place actually is moving around, then this is Terror Island. But if it doesn't move, then Terra Island should be out there somewhere. I really wish that we could find the actual Terra Island. Now, I know this is probably what they're talking about, but they keep saying, um... Oh! There's a thing I hadn't gone. 
a uh, whatever. Because I was trying to wonder why the hell the Geo Trees didn't all show up. Or well, how come I didn't get an award for getting them all, but I guess I didn't get them all. What the hell? We gotta go along, go around the long way. I'll talk to all these Norman dudes eventually. But for now, I just want to go down there and get the. Is there is there an herb on this island? I think there is. I get the feeling that there is. Doesn't matter. And there's a cat's here because of course there is. Those dudes are everywhere. You gotta go like around the island to get. And by the way, where is Phoenix at? I mean, what's his face and what's her face? Uh, Bienfu and Grimoire haven't been here in a while. Grimoire has been 1500 years. Don't know how long it's been for Bienfu. But, um. Obviously, there are some Norman that aren't here, but most of them seem to be here. I wonder if Phoenix is here. Or where he is. Alright. Looks like we found every last Geo Tree. Yeah, yeah. Now you can go anywhere on your Geo Board. But all that work has me worn out so much that my body's back to its old flabby self. We've asked a lot of you, Bienfu. But we couldn't have gotten this far without you. Did I hear right? I must be even more exhausted than I thought. I could have sworn I just heard Velvet actually thank me for something. Your ears aren't playing tricks on you, Bienfu. We're all very proud of you. Thanks so much for stepping up and helping us. You really come through when the cards are down. Yeah, thanks for everything, Bienfu. I've always just felt like I was a scared little Norman. I always hated the name Brave. I didn't think I deserved it at all. So hearing all you scary people accept me as who I am, it, it means a lot. You should be proud, Bienfu. Do you see any other Norman traveling with the Lord of Calamity? I think not. You know, you're right. No other Norman would be so courageous. Just me, Norman Brave. Now you're talking. That's my sidekick. Although, the fact that you're siding with the Lord of Calamity does make you public enemy number... Well, not number one, but certainly in the top ten. Hope you're ready to deal with the consequences of your poor life choices. She's not wrong. <laughs> you're all terrible! Bianfu is awesome, and I guess that is the last Geo Tree. Uh, it's been so long since I've felt the domain of the Elemental Empyreans. And human resonance is slowly returning to normal, too. The blessing of the four should keep malevolence and demon blood under control. But as the old saying goes, danger past and periods forgotten. How long will it take until prayers are neglected and the blessings fade once more? Yo, so it's a thousand year gap between this Zesteria and Berseria. So that's kind of cool. But now that we've gotten all that, I guess we did get a trophy. Now... So in Zesteria... Well, in this game... They were asleep, the Empyreans. So maybe it's been about a thousand years, I'm not sure. And then in um, Zesteria, they're also asleep. I don't think we end up waking them up in that game, though. What the hell? Oh, I've spoken to you before. I just, I get the feeling, what did that say? I thought it said black premium milk. I'm like, oh, hell no. There's no way. I get the feeling that, um, what in the world? Okay. I get the feeling that this place plays more of a role than just a random island you find somewhere else, though. I wonder if it's like a blessing or something like that that lets these... Alright. That lets these people feel so at ease here. Alright, is it just something that the Normans do when they're massed up like this? Is it one Norman in particular because they all have different effects? Or is it just the island? I don't know. Because the Norman don't really seem too affected by it. Some of them are chilling and hanging out, but a lot of them are actually doing stuff. I don't know. Everyone just feels like they ain't gotta do nothing. Wow! I ain't seen people in forever! Not since Artorius and his bunch. You've met Artorius before? Met him? Boy, I tell you what. I've done way more than that. Once, we all went adventuring with Artorius and the king himself. If you can believe it, we traveled the world, purifying malevolence and spreading the blessings of Mama King. Wait, the king? Yes, ma'am. 
the one and only King Claudine, who ended the era of darkness. The Hero King? How could someone from the distant past be traveling with Artorius? Between you and me, little lady, he used an oath to live about another 300 years. Heck, he was even the former head of the Exorcists. King Claudin was the head of the Exorcists? He held that post for a real long time, but then he met Artorius, who was an orphan. The king couldn't have been happier. He found an earnest pupil, a perfect candidate for his successor. But then, things took a mighty sad turn for the worse. What happened? All the other Norman who traveled with us are on their way to the place where Claudin died. The place known as Loringen. If you want to know more, you ought to ask them. It's hard to believe that King Claudin, the former head of the Exorcists, and Artorius' teacher were all the same person. If it's not so unbelievable, Melchior was using the same oath. I'd even go a step further and say that Melchior was imitating Claudin to get in his inner circle. Hold on. You didn't happen to know Claudin, did you? Afraid not. I never met the man in person. But I knew he had enough quirks to really get the old geezer's goat sometimes. I mean, he gave up wealth and power to protect the world as an exorcist. The man lived for his work in the same way that a fish lives to swim in the sea. And Artorius is the one who took his place. But for now, let's just focus on getting to Lorengen. Listen, Velvet. If nothing else, I think you should find the truth for your own sake. Yeah. I guess you're right. Alright, so that didn't happen the first time we were here, so I'll go check that out. Zavid a little bit ago. He had a kid Moloch along with him. He said he saved the kid from a demon. Zavid has a soft spot for children. That's what I heard. It was freezing cold that night, but he gave his coat to the kid to wear. You should have seen it. He was naked from the waist up. But as cold a night as it was, Zavid had this big smile plastered on his face. He laughed and said, I don't mind the cold. Besides, what's a little cold wind to Zavid the whirlwind? So, I guess that's what explains why he's dressed like he is in uh, Zisteria, because in Zisteria, he doesn't have a shirt. So, maybe he gave his shirt to that kid and just never got a replacement? That's the only thing I can think of. Plus, it does kind of fit his personality, and the fact that he's been changing so much throughout the history. But still, talking about Zavid, it is a little weird how uh, Zavid went from... You know, I just don't get it. How could a guy like Ifrit be friends with someone so hellbent on senseless killing? Sometimes, to kill someone is to save them. Who the hell is going to be saved by being killed? There's not one damn person in the whole world! To being the person who is... He... he killed it? You bastard! Hey, it was a Hellion, and Hellions belong in Hell. We could have safely quelled it. There was no need to kill it! Looked to me like you were just getting your asses kicked back there. Besides, death is a kind of salvation. For some. So, you know, it, it's, it's kind of... It's kind of different. But uh, I guess that does explain, that might explain why he only has uh, pants in Zisteria and doesn't have a shirt. I'm getting a bit tired of just lazing about on this island. It's boring here. How long have you been lazing about? Hmm, about a thousand years, I think. That is a long time to not do anything. To hell with then that. Again, it'd be terrible to have a mean old tyrant of a master, like what happened to Bienfu. Oh, can I just make a pact with a nice girl who will pamper me all day? If she was real pretty, I wouldn't even care if she liked making terrible puns. Um, I think you're setting yourself up for a letdown. Is that... What the hell? Well, there's one more inside this tent here. Get this place figured out, and then we'll head on out to the next thing in McJagger. That's so weird sounding. All right, I don't understand. When we come up here, 
Can I climb on top of that? No, go away. How the hell? There's gotta be a way up there, damn it. That might be Phoenix. I don't know. There's got to be a way up there. It's going to bother the hell out of me. I don't really have time to mess with it right now, but... If we look this way, there's... It doesn't matter. I'll figure it out eventually. So, yeah. Let's go to Lothringen real quick. Can we... Yes, we can. We can just warp to Norman Island whenever we want, so I'm not really gonna bother with it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about it rather. Get on up them steps. There's a random Norman here. Did I really not get this herb? These four dudes I've talked to before. But uh Norman Hero was the one who sent us here, hey, so what I've got a question. Were you one of the Norman who traveled with Artorius? Why sure! Are you a relative of his or something? Tell me, what happened here? No can do. That ain't something I can just go blabbing about. I'm a follower of Melchior's, who in turn stood behind Claudin. Please, we'd like to know. Well then, this place is where Claudin died. It all happened more than ten years ago. Claudin had taken an oath never to kill, but he broke it to save the life of Artorius, his most beloved disciple. Another death on his hands. Nah, Arturius didn't do nothing wrong. There was no other way Clodden could have saved the boy. Besides, Clodden had nearly stretched that oath to its limits. Clodden believed in the purity of Arturius' spirit. He interested his hopes and the very future of the world to his disciple. Sad thing is, Arturius just kept blaming and blaming himself for the death of his master. That sounds like him. So he tried to do everything he could to live up to Clodden's ideals. With no one else to help, he traveled the world teaching folks about Malachim and them dreadful demons and how important it is to have a pure heart. But people had lived in peace so long, they didn't care for his stories. And in the end, the four Empyreans drifted into slumber. Once again, Arturius felt he had nobody to blame but himself. So what did he do? We started talking about how if we stuck with him, he'd turn us into demons. So he journeyed to the east. All by his lonesome. He went east. Say, how is Arturius doing these days? What's he been up to? Uh, thanks for sharing your story. I know it must not be the easiest thing to talk about. Midgant has become a dangerous place. You should go back to Norman Island before you turn into a demon. Um, so our young head exorcist, racked with despair and helplessness, gave everything up and headed to the east. So then. To East Gand, I guess? Maybe to a ball? Velvet, why don't we stop in a ball? I feel like we're being called there. Yeah, I feel it too. Alright. It wasn't duty that the king entrusted Artorius with, it was hope. Alright, new hope, why not? So, I guess he's just gonna stay there now? She said he should go home before he turns into a demon. I don't think he turned into a demon. We're being called here by what exactly? Somebody fill me in. I'm too dumb to figure this out. Let's make it happen. Yo. Ah. Once I saw this place, it all started to make sense. Artorius must have lived a happy and peaceful life here. Who are you? Who, me? I'm a Norman who traveled the continent with Artorius years ago. He's been on my mind quite a lot lately. So I followed a rumor that led me here. That Princessia, were you the one who put it out? Nope, wasn't me. It was already here when I arrived. Do you know the deeper symbolic meaning behind the Princessia flower? It can mean an irreplaceable treasure. Or that you wish them well for years to come. Then the one who planted it was... Yep, that's right. The 
person lying in this grave saved the life of a certain someone who had been worn down and broken by his mission. Thank you. <laughs> the poor fellow. He was always so serious. So deadly, deadly serious. And he was practically always being strangled by his own conscience. So much so that he deluded himself into believing he needed to erase the emotions of the human race he so dearly loved. Please, if I may, somehow, some way, set the poor guy free. Oh, I intend to. But my version of setting him free might be a bit different from yours. Well, I'm still counting on you. Lord of Calamity. I think I understand Artorius's past now. Yeah. No matter who you are or how far up the chain you climb, life never entirely goes your way. You said it. As much as he claims to be a man of reason, he still managed to give in to sentiment enough to plant flowers here. Not only can he not protect the ones he loves, he can't even permit himself to be free. Indeed. But I think that's human nature, too. I suppose. But I'd also say he has an inner strength like no one else. He lost his master and his wife. And yet he overcame those failures to rise again as the Shepherd. I get that. But it doesn't absolve his crimes. I have to settle the score with him. Yeah. I'll be with you until the very end, Velvet. Are you sure that's really something you want to say in front of your sister's gravesite? All the more reason. She should hear this. Ooh, Norman Eternity. Not the only one counting on you. It's a nice name, actually. And this herb is back. I'm not complaining, I just don't get how the herbs work. Anyway, I would love to keep doing this, but I gotta go make sure I can get some food done from a lizard. So, thank you for watching. As always, my name is Ray, and I will see you all next time for part number 16 of Tales of Berseria postgame, where I will try to find out where the hell the Dark Turtles is at. Yes, you heard me right, Dark Turtles. But until then, goodbye, everybody.